Hello, this is Ashwini and welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be covering most scenario based interview questions, a uh, microservice interview question or you can say Java developer interview question. Okay. And if I miss some other questions or you have any other question in mind, just let me know. I will cover in the next video. Okay. So let's start our today's video. So when you are appearing for a Java developer interview or microservice developer interview, a uh, very basic and first question interviewer will ask you, oh, you have worked on microservices, right? or you say like you know the idea you having an idea of microservice then they will ask you then let me know what is a microservices so you can directly say like this is an approach of sd lc or uh, life cycle approach in which like it is used in huge application are built as collection of uh, small application or function modules these modules are deployed independently okay so let me explain uh, let me simplify for you when I was just uh, upload that uh, microservices whole playlist, if you have not uh, watched it, just I will give the link in description. Just go and watch that playlist. Okay, it will help you a lot in a microservices. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here, like when you are working on a monolithic application, you are having one uh, big application, and when uh, you are working on microservices, you are just converting this application in different uh, small small modules. I hope you are getting it right you are just converting this big application into the small small modules and this small modules you will be deployed independently i hope uh, it is making sense right so this whole sentence is saying on the similar thing which i have drawn here so they are scalable it means you can independently scale that okay and communicate with each other with the standard protocol now it's depend on totally on your uh, side like whatever communication you have to make like uh, over http or whatever the uh, method you can use okay so moving to the next question another question is like what is the use of container uh, in your microservices so whenever the container uh, bird come in a picture you just go to the docker and all right docker i can ask this question or similar uh, thing like how can we use docker and kubernetes in terms of microservices but yeah they will ask you a question like container and all just the you listen the word container at the moment you can answer in this way okay container are used to manage a microservice based application this is a very basic approach okay do not follow the exact bookish language they are easy and effective why the container also helpful and effectively deploying and deploy individually the same thing microservices are a whole game of deploy individual service that's why we are using a microservices the biggest advantage of container are that they are easy to scale because they are independent and you can easily scale your microservice using tools like kubernetes like what is kubernetes kate what this kate is it is a management uh, like a uh, container or docker management tool okay uh, which can manage container at a scale okay container also make deployment uniform for example you can deploy a microservice written in a java or any other language in the same way so doesn't matter if you are uh, just written your uh, microservice just say in python or .NET, whatever language you have used to develop your microservice, you can manage or you can scale, you can do monitoring, you can uh, do anything, whatever you want with your containers. It doesn't matter. If you learn how to do with the one microservice, you can do other microservice also because uh, the container are same. This Kubernetes understand the language of container, doesn't uh, understand the language of your Python or Java or Ruby or whatever language you are using. Okay, perfectly fine. Now, moving to the next question so my next question is like list a difference between monolithic okay this is very important important question when you say like you have worked on monolithic and uh, microservice architecture so this is very 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 important question so monolithic and soa because uh, right now what happened like a lot of project using a uh, so architecture like service oriented architecture and uh, we as a developer when we start career or people of like feel this is a microservice architecture because initially you don't have that uh, idea so what is the difference and uh, what is these are so let's see monolithic architecture okay all software component and application assembled in one package tightly and we can deploy as a single application like this okay this fine perfectly fine is as a java application you build at home this is a monolithic architecture okay and service oriented architecture is a collection of service that communicate with each other and 
सिंपल डेटा पासिंग और एक्टिविटी कॉर्डिनेटर सो वट डज इट मीन यू जस्ट मेक वन सर्विस यू मेक अदर सर्विस यू मेक अदर सर्विस यू मेक अदर सर्विस एंड यू आर कम्युनिकेटिंग विद ईच अदर विद दी हेल्प ऑफ सम रेस्ट एपी आर वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू यूज वट एवर द कम्युनिकेशन मॉडल यू वॉन्ट टू यूज इट टोटली डिपेंड ऑन आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट द कम्युनिकेशन हियर so that is called a service oriented architecture we are not using any discovery service we are not using any uh, other service at the other component with related to microservice now let's come to the microservice our favorite part microservice architecture is a collection of small functional modules this is not a service this is a modules which you have convert your monolithic architecture monolithic modules uh, you can put a uh, two three modules you can put a Uh, like many modules in one microservice, it totally depends on your architect, or you can design. These functional modules are independently deployable and scalable. Okay, understand? Target specific business goals and communication with each other, and over a standard protocol. I hope you are getting it. It's saying okay, these can deploy independently and they can communicate each other. They are totally free with that. Okay, so I hope you are getting it right. What is a SOA? Uh, Sometimes people ask directly. They neglect the uh, monolithic and they say, "What is the difference between SOA and this microservice architecture?" So be ready for it. Now moving to the next question. Describe the uh, like circumstances under which you would use Netflix strict. So this is very important question. Okay, uh, before you say like you worked on microservices just. be prepared for it if you haven't used this okay because in microservice very common pattern is like you will always be ready for a fault tolerant system okay because hystric let me tell you the very basic first then we will go to the definition it is a like fault tolerant system when let's suppose your microservice fails somewhere then you will give some alternative code to run so hystric will run that one okay that's finished now go to the definition it is a commonly expected that uh fact that hystric is also known as error tolerant system that i told right fault tolerant system and latent library okay the main purpose of hystric is to make sure that isolate the access point okay on the other hand with the help of these access point remote system can easily reached it also make sure that restrict the wide shared okay now use of third party library as well as services in this manner it ensure that application run effectively because you don't want the termination right unnecessary termination it also quite effective in preventing the failure that frequently take place in a distributed system because microservices when you are using a microservices right that will be a distributed system and you have to preventing that failure termination system right failure system that frequently occurring by having a like a error in some code or logic that are quite complex in nature okay now so this is a basic definition you can give this big definition i know when you uh, just you will go to a uh, 100 line of something then you will remember a 10 line of right so that's why i just give you the big definition so you can understand now moving to the next question now define cache with respect to environment in which microservice operate so uh, this is very important question in terms of microservices so let's suppose uh let me give you the one example you are having a uh, four microservices and you are just uh, implementing a otp service so now whenever this is your authentication service your authentication service generated an otp and on the basis of otp, OTP you are just uh, generating a uh, we can say a jwt token okay now these all services has to validate that jwt token then in this case what you will use So now this is your answer. Now I will not tell you how to implement it. Just you have ideas, just let me know in the comment section. Okay. So I will uh, let you know that is correct or not. So it is commonly observed that uh, cache is a kind of area in local memory because cache is a part of local memory, right? That has ability to hold a copy of frequently research item. Yeah, definitely. We are uh, generally we can use a cache in between our first layer. This is our cache, right? This is my cache and this is my database. So basically, when my application is frequently uh, hitting our database, so that's why I just introduce a cache in between. So my hit to the database it decreases. Okay, uh, another approach or another uh, use case. In other word, if you have cache accumulated in the application, the application speeds up because you are not hitting again and again to the database, right? Okay, whatever I am drawing here, uh, 
I'm not like uh, I'm giving this only word uh, definition to you. I don't want that. I want you to complete understanding. So that's why I'm drawing something, giving the use case, we're giving the example, and giving the definition. I hope you are getting it. Okay. If you like the video, just do subscribe and hit the like button. Okay. Now, on the other hand, uh, you can use, you can also use a past function to control the amount of cache. Uh, there is a uh, lot of algorithm you can use anything to uh, just uh, control the amount of cache. Okay. Do not worry about it. Now, next question. How will you deploy exception handling in microservices? This is very important and we have to take care about when we are working to the microservices. So, an exception occur while uh, processing a HTTP request. Uh, you need to catch an exception in your controller or service and return the appropriate response entity. So, for each and every uh, whatever the uh, exception has, you have to create a response entity for it manually. Okay. And here are some thumb rule about the exception handling. This you have to remember and take care about it when you are deploying a microservice okay so add response status to your exceptions that you write perfect for all exception implement an exception handler method on a controller advice okay and class or class use or or use an instance of simple mapping exception handler so what it is saying either you can use this okay or either you can use this so for controller specific exception, add exception handler. So whenever you are making a global exception handler, you can say a exception handler method to it. Okay. Point to note it is that exception handler method on a controller are always selected before those any controller advice. Okay. Instance, it is undefined in what order controller advice are processed. So basically, we need to make a one global exception handler. So whenever my uh, low stream this application or services just uh, like throwing an error so i have this global exception handler so this will catch and give the appropriate error to the client okay so now moving to the next question seventh explain the api gateway so if you are not aware about all these terms what we are using api gateway or uh, we can say discovery server just please watch that microservice series of mine you will get an idea okay so api gateway is a service uh, which sits in front of the exposed api so let's suppose this is a service which having four exposed api so this is another service called api gateway api gateway i hope now idea clear and act as an entry point so whatever the request will come it go to the an api gateway okay so for the microservice gateway is also hold a minimum logic for routing a calls because we have some logic here then how will you get to know like you have to transfer a logic to this api you have to transfer logic to the, this api okay calls to the microservice and also aggregation of response i i hope you are getting it right an api can also authenticate the request by verifying and identify the user so whatever the task an api can do okay authentication a request and it can also act as a load balancer okay and it also can act as a rate limiting so it and also rate limiting and also it can whitelist or blacklist in the source api so ip address not api my bad source ip address so this uh, things uh, there are a lot of more things but these are the more important things which can like uh, important thing which can api so api gateway can do so that's i, I highlighted here okay i hope uh, you are getting at this whole picture now uh, one question i want to ask you uh, if you have that answer just let me know in the comment section so what is this next question is question eight okay let's suppose this is a your homework kind of thing okay you are having these uh, many microservices let's suppose four microservices and i want a common uh, let's say logging okay so each microservice if you have configure your log forge here it will print under it any server okay let's suppose it deploy into the different server or any other servers or any different locations for now you can say a different server okay and i just allocated one server for logging so i want a centralized logging okay so how can you do that okay so this is your question this is your homework so thank you for uh, watching this video okay if you like this video do hit the like button do subscribe if you are enjoying the video just let me know in the comment section and uh, say something yeah good it motivates me to make these videos okay i will see you in the next video take care and bye bye